the late Edwin Lewis Cole was a mighty man of God who championed the message of Christ-like manhood. He taught men everywhere to pursue lives that honored God by following Him wholeheartedly. Many today live in bondage and don't see the hand of God working in their lives today. It's no coincidence that experiencing God's blessing on the earth is correlated to living consecrated lives. Because God is holy, He requires His children to be holy so that He can freely bless us. A dangerous lie has infiltrated the church that has made people think they can live however they want and still be blessed. It's no wonder most men around the world today are frustrated and at the end of themselves. We all need Jesus in our lives who will show us the way to become who He created us to be. Living a life that honors God is different from what the world demonstrates it should be. Following Jesus wholeheartedly will cost you much but will also come with great rewards. As we go through this message, I pray that the Holy Spirit speaks to you and opens your eyes to God's truth. God wants to bless you abundantly, and to do that, there are areas He wants you to deal with. Let's get into it. Holding on to bitterness is like taking poison and expecting someone else to drop dead, yet it destroys the bitter person. While I can relate to the pain and betrayal of people who've wronged me, bitterness has never been a solution. Unforgiveness destroys relationships and limits the things God wants to accomplish through His people. I've seen people suffer sickness because they refuse to forgive those who offended them in the past. Marriages break down because of unforgiveness even when the offended party tries to make things right with their spouse. Many of the people who pursue divorce later regret it in life, realizing they didn't do enough to save their marriage. While you may feel justified to not forgive, you do more damage to yourself than you may realize. Unforgiveness prevents the flow of God's grace in your life and stops the fullness of His blessing as well. What's worse is that the sins you refuse to forgive become an embodiment of your life. It made me understand why family cycles tend to be repeated, and it's because of unforgiveness towards father or mother figures. I've heard people vow that they'll never be like their fathers and end up becoming what they hated in their fathers. However, Despite what you might have gone through as a child, don't allow the root of bitterness to grow inside your heart. The book of John, chapter 20, verse 23, says, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. When you forgive, you make a conscious decision to not perpetuate the negative cycle in your relationships and family bloodline. Forgiveness is a process, I'll admit, but when you reach out to God to help you forgive, He will help you so that you can be free from bondage. King David said in Psalm, chapter 66, verses 18 to 19, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear, but certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. God requires that we live consecrated lives because He is holy and wants us to be holy too. We can't be effective Christians in the world if we behave like everyone else does by indulging in sin. We have to be different and show the world that we follow Jesus Christ. How else would non-believers know the difference between followers of Jesus and those who are not? Pursuing a holy lifestyle comes with its challenges, including persecution, for wanting to do what's right. It's good to safeguard yourself against triggers that will lead you down the wrong path. If you struggle with purity, 
It probably wouldn't be a good idea to hang out at a nightclub, for example. Daily repentance is important in a believer's life because we fall short every day and need God's forgiveness. The devil moves around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour, so we must be vigilant. God doesn't go against his word. And when you live a lifestyle, contrary to his word, he withholds his blessings. While his love for you is unconditional, his blessings are conditional. It's not a question of salvation. When we surrender our lives to Jesus, our eternity is secured in him and we'll one day go to heaven. It's the blessings here on earth that we miss out on when we walk in unrighteousness before him. We demonstrate our love for God by obeying his commandments and not compromising on them for anything. Walking in obedience to his word gives him the legal to pour out his abundant blessing over you. When Moses led the Israelites through the wilderness, he faced many challenges, and complaining was one of the big ones. Imagine what he went through, trying to lead people who constantly complained about everything and stressed Moses out. I'm sure you can relate to how draining it can be to be around people who are constantly negative. You just don't want them around, don't you? Complaining saps the life out of you and takes away your power to take responsibility. God got fed up with some of the people's complaining and swallowed them up through the earth. In our daily lives, we have many opportunities to complain about all the troubles we face in life. Learning to appreciate what you have is more important than going out to find unicorns that don't exist in reality. No one likes being around negative people, so it's best to learn to be positive in all situations. The negative words we speak when complaining blind us from potential solutions to our problems, even if we're smart. Only when you decide to take responsibility will you see things you can do to change your situation for the better. Taking responsibility for both your own life and the lives of those who depend on you puts you on the right path. Whenever I complain about things or speak negatively about others, I get convicted by the Holy Spirit. I often have to repent for speaking ill of others and not taking responsibility for my actions. While some complaints are justified, I'd caution against absolving yourself of any responsibility for your situation. The thing is, no one will rescue you, so it's good to take responsibility and ask God for direction. Taking responsibility gives you the power to do something about what you're not happy about. When you do, you take control of your situation. Edwin Louis Cole was quoted as saying, Pride is the strength of sin, and it's the reason why Satan was cast away. I've had problems with pride, admittedly, and what followed thereafter was a big fall, which was a humbling experience. The shame you have to deal with when you hit rock bottom is not a pleasant experience at all. When we humble ourselves and repent of our sinful ways, God remembers us. Humility is the opposite of pride, and the devil often lies to people that admitting when you're wrong is weakness. Humility is a great sign of strength, and not weakness, and sets you on a path towards God's blessings. Pride often comes when you see yourself as better than other people or think you know it all. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 18 says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. If Satan was cast out of heaven because of pride, what do you think would happen to us? Don't be deceived by his lies, because once you've hit rock bottom, he'll be the first to laugh at you. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. It's often better to humble yourself before the Lord that he may lift you up in due season. Don't wait for him to humble you himself. 
as the consequences will be tougher. A marriage I know was destroyed because one spouse was more learned than the other and felt they were better. With the negative influence of friends on top of that, she became unrecognizable to her spouse and eventually left him. It's sad how things turned out for that marriage. But God is not mocked and everyone reaps what they sow. He has been vindicating the abandoned spouse and his life looks brighter than ever. Some people want to serve God but also have one foot in the world, making them unstable in their ways. I've seen how the pursuit of worldly pleasures has wrecked marriages, relationships, promising careers, and wellness. In terms of marriage, what some value more is the glitz and glam of marriage versus the lifetime commitment. They invest more in the wedding than they do in developing the foundation for a lifelong marriage. It's sad to see when marriages break down because it's an institution that's close to God's heart. It's harder for the kids involved leading to generational problems that perpetuate unless they are addressed. I've also seen how young people with promising careers and lives ahead of them made a mess of their lives. Some died from involvement with the wrong people or ended up in jail and missed out on amazing opportunities. God grieves when such things happen. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 22 says, Now, he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. As much as God may want to bless us, He's limited in what he can do when we pursue worldly pleasures. It's good to learn from the example of other people so you can avoid similar mistakes in your life. At one time, I chased after money as my primary goal but ended up wasting a good chunk of my youth. Whenever you set out to chase pleasures, it's almost guaranteed that you'll never be satisfied even if you get them. Many times, worldly success is elusive and may be God's way to get your attention so that you seek His will instead. He is more interested in your character than He is in your comfort. When you decide to follow Jesus Christ and His purpose for your life, you may also struggle with fear and doubt. God's ways are not our ways and neither are His thoughts. So yes, you may question His ways. You must keep in mind that he uses the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. He does this so that his name may be glorified on the earth and draw more people to his attention. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear is the devil's tool to try and stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Understand that fear is a state of mind and not a true reflection of what really is. God has blessed and equipped us with everything we need to fulfill our earthly mandate. So be encouraged. Face your fears with boldness and you'll realize that most of your fears were irrational. Whenever you feel fear, do it anyway, and you'll get your breakthrough. The devil is afraid of people who are bold in their faith because they do damage to his plans. He will try to attack you and get you off course, but you must remain steadfast to the calling on your life. You'll be amazed at how many lives will be transformed. Because of Queen Esther's boldness, she saved the entire nation of Israel from annihilation at the hand of Haman. Imagine what might have happened if she shied away from the call upon her life. We can't know for sure, because God could have raised up someone else, but also many people could have died. Facing your fears has generational ramifications, 
so I encourage you to be bold and overcome those fears. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you today to seek your blessings over my life. I repent of my wicked ways and ask that you cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Lord, you know my heart and how sinful I am, and yet you are merciful towards me. You've saved my life countless times from the hand of the enemy, and I could have been dead today. Father, forgive me, for where I've fallen short of your glory and sinned against you and my brothers and sisters, I stand in the gap to repent for the sins of my forefathers that continue to affect us today. Your word tells us that the iniquities of our fathers affect us up to the third and fourth generations. Like you faithful servants in the Bible, I stand here today and ask for your forgiveness for the iniquity of my forefathers. I pray that the evil altars that were erected are torn down today in Jesus' name. I choose today to set up a righteous altar dedicated to you and declare that the buck stops with me. No longer will the sins of my fathers be perpetuated from here onwards. My family and my children are free from the iniquities of my forefathers and the blood of Jesus covers them. No weapon fashioned against them shall prosper in the name of Jesus. I call upon you and ask that you send your angels to destroy the evil altars set up by my forefathers. May the idol that sits on those altars be also destroyed and that they would never raise their head again. May you send your fire from heaven to consume any form of evil activity so that we're set free in Jesus name I thank you Jesus for hearing our prayer and setting us free from bondage I dedicate my family and future generations to your hands today praying that they will be established under your guidance may our enemies become your enemies so that the world may know that you are a faithful God who fights for his children. May you prepare a table for us in the midst of our enemies and vindicate your servants, O Lord. Righteous judge, where there has been injustice against our family, I pray for your righteous verdict from the courts of heaven. Your word tells us that vengeance is yours and that you will repay our adversaries for their evil against us. Father, in the name of Jesus, hear the cries of our hearts today. Lord, may your kingdom come here on earth, just as it is in heaven. Now that we have addressed the accusations the devil made against us, we ask you to bless us abundantly, O God. Open up the floodgates of heaven and release your abundance of wealth because you set us free from poverty. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches that are found in Jesus Christ. I receive this promise for my life and my family and declare that your abundance is flowing into our lives. We desire your blessing so that we may have more than enough to meet our needs and meet the needs of others. You came to give us life and to give it in abundance, and we say, let your will be done in our lives. We refuse to live below what you intended for us. No longer will a lack of finances stop us from fulfilling our earthly mandates. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof. And so as our Father, we ask you to bless us with all that we need. My children, shall never lack any good thing in Jesus name and now Lord I declare that no weapon fashioned against me or my household shall ever prosper I declare today that me and my household shall serve you all the days of our lives I commit to being the spiritual leader in my home and raising my family according to your word as you have given me this responsibility 
I shall love my wife as you love the church, to glorify your name. My wife is blessed, and I decree and declare that her life will bring you glory in Jesus' name. She shall be like the Proverbs 31 woman who honors you and takes care of her family. She will be rooted in righteousness, live a life of virtue, and be an example to younger women. Her name shall be known in the nations as a woman of virtue. Her husband will be proud to call her his wife. Our children shall be blessed and bring you glory on the earth. They shall be obedient to their parents as you instruct in your word, O Lord. They shall be quivers that will be sent out to do great and mighty exploits on the earth to glorify your name. Whatever they put their hand to shall prosper, because you shall be their God. No weapon fashioned against them shall ever prosper. My children's offspring shall be mighty upon the earth and will know that our family serves a mighty God. They shall carry these same values, embody them in their lives, and walk in the fear of the Lord. They shall pass them on to their children, who will perpetuate them in the future generations. They shall be mighty on the earth and point other people to your Son, Jesus Christ. Our family will be blessed for thousands of generations and bring glory to you, O God. We shall never be moved as your word promises, and so we believe and receive that promise. Heavenly Father, today marks a new day for our family and the generations to come. I seal this prayer and declarations of the blood of Jesus and ask that they be recorded in heaven. Our lives shall never be the same again, and we shall see your goodness in the land of the living. May our lives continue to bring you glory as your blessings flow into our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.